we made 13 folders for you to try. Yes, you, a brand new player who's looking to get into PvP or a veteran who's looking for something a little bit less powerful and something fun and versatile. We've got so many options for you. These folders were designed for our rental rumble format. Yes, there is still time to join our tournaments. It's happening this weekend. I've got all sorts of information about that at the back side of this video. Take a look at all the timelines if you'd like. Let's just get right into these 13 fun folders. Zap Slash is named after a really simple concept. Your sensor is going to be the zap and your var sword is going to be the slash. So if you put a sensor down the middle, it's going to put an eye obstacle that makes it so that your opponent will not be able to enter their center area. So that means your var sword, if you do your sonic boom command, is basically going to hit without fail. And that's really the secret of var sword. There are other commands you could learn like life sword, but at the end of the day, the sonic boom is the best by far. All you have to do is hold A down and press left B, right B. That's it. It's super simple, super easy. Make sure to memorize it. Now, Slash Cross is definitely recommended for this folder, as is the Gregor version in general, because it is powering up the Var Sword. However, you gotta be really careful because as you hold A to do the Var Sword command, you're also charging up with Slash Cross. So you have to really be careful as you hold the A button down. I would definitely not recommend this folder for newer players who are nervous about Var Sword or are nervous about um, delays in the internet affecting it. Now, of course, we have Life Sword 2, which is a lot of fun. However, Wind Rack and Mag Coil become a lot more interesting in this folder. So the idea with the Mag Coil is you're going to force your opponent to get hit by the sensor. And then if you go into Beast Out mode, your Wind Rack is going to hit the opponent back. And then for as far back as you blow them, the sensor is going to hit an additional time. So in this quick clip, you can see that we deal over 600 damage to our opponent right here because the first sensor hit went down, then it triggered two additional times for three times total, as well as the wind rack damage itself. You don't have to go into beast out, but it's pretty helpful to get that extra 140. So overall, Zap Slash is pretty strong. We've got some really solid options when it comes to Slashman SP and um, the ability to use Grab Banish. However, I would say that it's pretty reliant on Sensor and Var Sword to deal damage, both of which are not the most reliable. Sensor can get destroyed pretty easily. Um, if the opponent's in Dust Cross, they can also just suck it up for free damage. And like I said, Var Sword um, is not necessarily the most new player friendly, so it can be a little tricky if you're um, actually whipping on your Sonic Booms and therefore your Var Swords are dealing nothing. So altogether, um, a pretty solid strategy, but um, definitely got its risks attached to it too. M is for Massacre, and this folder absolutely lives up to that. Sure, you get strong chips like Machine Gun 3 in the M code, but really the star of this deck show is the ability to Beast Rush. This is when you go into Beast Out mode and you just keep battering the opponent with all sorts of attacks that don't cause them to flash and get invincibility frames. So Wind Rack plus Lance is a pretty classic combo, as you can see right here. But what if you follow it up with a chip like Drill Arm? That also pushes the opponent back. So a Drill Arm connects into a Lance, but it's a uh, breaking chip, right? So if you can freeze the opponent with your Ice Seed and maybe your Train Arrow, then your Drill Arm's dealing double damage. It's just a really fast and aggressive folder with all sorts of fun capabilities. I think one of my favorite parts about this folder is that because the position doesn't matter with all of your lances and your wind wrecks and drill arms, you kind of got control of the opponent's space. You don't really need to worry about area grab nearly as much, so instead of running um, a full package of them, we run two grab banishes to make sure that our opponent is not dictating the flow of battle. That's really what this folder is all about. You want to be fast and aggressive, and you want to be in control as often as you can. You've got chips like Flash Bomb to start off um, really powerful chains of attacks, and you've even got um, a few other um, powerful chips as well um, that can really close the opponent out. So really, this is all about aggression. The downside of this is there is no anti-damage at all. This folder is aggressive. It's kind of a glass cannon. Uh, and in, honestly, one of your invis is probably going to be lost to rush in this format as well. So you've really got to be super careful with the invises when you use them. Maybe you can time freeze counter to avoid rush completely. Whether you use them or not is really up to you because you want to be in full control with the massacre. If you're a boomer like me, you know that Hot Coffee is a Grand Theft Auto 3 mod that's quite infamous, though of course it's also a folder in the rental rumble. The star of this show is the Lil Boiler 3. This is almost like a V-Doll in that you throw it out, 
and it will take up to three hits of damage and then spit it out against the opponents. Um, it will deal water damage in all the areas surrounding it, so if you've got your Aqua Dragons or your Ice Seeds up, they will freeze the opponent, which is super, super nifty. And um, although it does say it's Obstacle, which it is, um, it is, of course, the water damage too. So um, Train Hero 3 combos really nicely with all those um, Ice Panels that you've got. If you can freeze the opponent or um, freeze them with the Train Arrows, you're going to set them up for a lot of good and powerful damage. The Fire Burn 3 is going to help trap them in place. It does crack panels, and it deals a solid amount of damage, as well as, of course, getting rid of Tomahawk, which we all know is really the bane of a lot of folders existence now this folder does have a lot of really great positioning thankfully because otherwise it's really hard to actually connect with that little boiler you got your grab banish as well as judge man judge man's also great too because if you do flinch that opponent you can um you can basically pierce through um the flashing you can stun them and then set them up for the little boiler attack and then Slashman SP is, of course, a solid amount of damage, as well as Aquaman being able to freeze the opponent with that wonderful, wonderful range of his if he's in the back two rows. Overall, a really fun and solid folder. Um, the downside is that the little boiler really is kind of hard to connect with, and if you're not um, getting your little boiler combos, the rest of the damage output of this folder is a little weaker. Like, for example, we don't have um, breaking chips to take advantage of the Ice Seed, um, unless you go into Dust Cross or maybe Ground Cross to try and hit you um, with your, uh, hit the opponent with your charge shot. But otherwise, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty solid. Um, definitely a really fun folder, and I can tell you too that it's pretty popular among um, some of the people who've already registered. Proto Finish is a tribute to everyone's favorite red swordsman whose name doesn't rhyme with hero. Um, we've got Proto Man SP, Proto Man EX, as well as Proto Man uh, to sort of round out our theme deck there. Now, of course, um, we do have a lot of sword chips. Now, if you combine Y Blade and Long Blade with Proto Man SP, you get double hero, which is very, very powerful, 600 damage. That being said, uh, sometimes you're better off breaking up the program advance so that you're not all in, because if you're all in, um, you might lose to a timely invis or anti-damage that your opponent time freeze counters with. That being said, it is a very, very powerful option. Um, Step Sword and uh, Y Blade in particular are so powerful because if you're in Slash Cross and you charge up your Sonic Wave, they basically are not going to miss, which is quite a bit of damage, adding an extra 50 to each of them. You're basically swinging your swords left and right. And you may or may not have known this. We all know that Sword, Wide Sword, and Long Sword makes Life Sword. But did you know that Sword, Wide Blade, and Long Blade makes Life Sword as well? So that's what this one sword is right here to get a little Life Sword action up in our deck. And of course, we got some Machine Guns as well. Probably should have been Machine Gun B, but you know, what can I say? Proto Man does what he does. Now, I will say, if you lose um, Slash Cross, if you ever get decrossed out of it, you may be better off staying in regular Mega Man mode or even Beast Out form. The reason why is because Reflect 3, which is, of course, a shield that Proto Man uses, um, is a decently powerful attack, but it's also really, really good at scoring counter hits. So you may be able to get a very timely um, times 2 damage with a full synchro if you are not in a cross form. So altogether, um, a super fun, fast format. Um, I would say that uh, one of the weaknesses of this deck is that it really um, flashes the opponent a lot. They get a lot of invincibility frames. Um, so uh, I would say being cautious of how you space out your swords and being cautious of how you can attack them is going to be a really, really big part of it. Um, that being said, it is very, very fast and strong, um, and it's certainly a very fun folder for people who love Proto Man. Like the name suggests, Supersonic is a very fast and aggressive sound wave kind of folder. We've got our Elect Pulse 1, which paralyzes the opponent, and that combos really nicely with Elect Pulse 3 that leaves them with an HP bug. If you're in Beast Out mode, you don't even have to worry about aiming. Um, the Beast Rush will just go in and get it, which is great to combo up with chips like Wind Wreck, which also don't flash the opponent and can be, um, you know, fitted together really nicely. And if you're in Elect Cross, uh, you're going to be doing an extra 50 for each of these pulses that are super hard to dodge, which is extremely powerful. Elect Cross will also charge up Wave Arm 3, normally kind of a mid-chip, um, but it does paralyze the opponent when you charge it up, um, and it definitely fits the theme of Sonic Waves and things of that nature. Um, fanfare, <laughs> we've got four of those, and that's admittedly kind of a balancing feature um, to put some dead cards into a, an otherwise very, very powerful and aggressive folder. Um, that being said, we do have the panel grabs and area grabs to try and throw one fanfare in the very back row. If you can actually pull that off, it's really difficult for the opponent to deal with because they need a chip like Blast Man or they need to be able to dust cross and suck it up. Um, so all these considered, that's a little gimmicky, but it does work every now and then, which is super fun. And of course, we've got a pretty solid selection of chips in the back. Blastman is once again going to deal with Tomahawk Cross as much as possible because Tomahawk does not get paralyzed and is definitely um, a pretty good way to shut down um, the Elect Cross strategies. Otherwise, um, the folder is really fast and aggressive. Um, I would say 
the weakness of this is definitely going to be um, the fanfares and certain other dead chips. Um, however, if you can get a good draw going, it can be really hard to deal with, um, especially because the elect pulses pierce through invis. Not sure if you knew that. Um, so your opponent's going to need a really good um, anti-damage if they want to shut that off. And of course, the machine guns can deal with that too. So definitely um, a solid folder. Um, it loses a lot of damage output if it loses a cross, which is pretty big, um, in addition to not stunning the opponents. Um, but that being said, a super, super solid and fun strategy, especially for our Sonic fans out there. Snake, these are next generation special forces led by unit Foxhound. Oh, of course, this is kind of a Metal Gear Solid theme. Folder we've got going on, all sorts of uh, military weaponry. We've got our fire burner flamethrowers. We've got our machine guns, which never have felt more thematic than in this folder. We've got our uh, solid snake right here our wood dragon, as well as, um, you know, some special guns, our hind D, some C4s, and even a special little uh, gray fox katana. Um, all jokes aside, this folder is definitely packing in firepower. There's a lot of high damage potential. Um, I think that Gregor is a little bit better for it. However, you could make a really good um, case for Falzar because Tengu Cross being able to um, you know, blow opponents back with the wind wreck and then also uh, move them forward uh, with the back B is really good at making the opponent hit mines, which are a really easy 200 damage. The, um, the output is really insane. Uh, most of these chips can hit for over 100. Um, and actually, the Moonblade uh, inflicts an HP bug on the opponent. Not sure if you knew that. That was certainly uh, relatively new news to me. Um, one downside of this folder is it's relatively lacking in defense. We're uh, packing one less invis and anti-damage. And um, beat is going to be really strong against this folder because we've only got these two mega chips, although they are both pretty strong overall. Um, one upside, though, is that with all the cursor chips between machine guns and um, circle guns, anti-damage is um, not super effective against this. And with Wood Dragon setting up with Fire Burner um, or slapping on um, a Y cap at the back of an air raid, there's all sorts of really powerful offensive options that you can utilize. I think it's really um, not just a fun Metal Gear Solid theme folder, but also a pretty solid one overall. The Avatar is a really fun folder that's got all sorts of elemental coverage. You've got fire, water, electric, and wood. Um, if you are unfamiliar, this is actually the Program Advanced Master Cross. If you start with fire hits, and then you go with each element that beats it. That's how I like to remember it. So fire, and then water wins, and then electric wins, and then wood wins. Um, and then you've got yourself a pretty strong program advance. Now, that being said, um, Master Cross can be kind of a trap. Sometimes it's better to just use the four chips by themselves because then you're not all in on um, an attack that can be invis or anti damage or even limited if they're in the back row. However, we do have Lance to push them out of the back row to try and get that con uh, that hit to connect. And then we've got Wind Rack, which is also a really fun combo with um, the Lance. Um, Really, altogether, we've got all sorts of fun options. We've even got Element Man, which really fits the theme. The white cap in here is particularly strong with Aqua Needle. Normally, this chip really sucks because um, even though all three of those uh, needles will lock onto the enemy, um, the first hit will cause the opponent to flash and gain invincibility frames. However, if you put the white cap, all three of those hits will connect for full damage and leave them vulnerable to another hit. So one of my favorite things to do is to charge up the Aqua Needle um, with Aqua Cross, that deals 240 damage times two, right? Um, and then you can uh, follow that up with a fire hit, which also hits really hard because they're stunned. It is very, very powerful. Um, I would say one of the weaknesses of this deck is that there are no machine gun chips whatsoever. Just didn't quite fit the theme. Um, so you're very, very prone to that. That's why um, Falzer is really preferred for this version. You get Aqua Cross to charge up your Aqua Needles as well as um, the really fast um, charge attack to try and proc the anti-damage. Um, but that being said, this deck is very versatile. It's very fast. Um, you've got all sorts of coverage to be able to stop the opponent. Risky Honey is really slept on as a chip, I think, um, especially when your opponent is kind of desperate in their beast up mode. If you charge it up with Tomahawk, another reason why um, Falls is pretty good, especially with Lance to charge that up too. You can deal quite a bit of damage. Um, and overall, it's a pretty fun and solid deck. Of all the Rental Rumble folders, Rolkin is probably the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart. We started with a really fun theme, uh, which was how do we make every single roll work as a folder? Um, and then we kind of slowly powered it up along with the rest of the decks. So it was the very first one that we made for this event. So, of course, we got Vulcan, right? That's where uh, part of the pun comes from. Vulcan seems like a pretty okay chip at a first glance. It's a 100 damage baseline, but if you beast out, you get that extra plus 30 to each of those shots, which turns it to a 250 damage attack. So, really, the rest of the folder is kind of about setting up and supporting Vulcan. Um, we've got other multi-hitting attacks, which are cool, 
because of course we've got ways to power it up with double point and attack plus 30 to really make those Vulcans sting. And of course the rolls themselves not only heal you so that you can um, stay alive while you're setting up your Vulcan combos, but they also combo pretty decently with um, these uh, chips that also power up the attacks because of course roll is going to heal you for as much damage as you would have dealt um, even if roll doesn't even hit the opponents now you might be like me and wondering wow what the heck like you can have more than one of a mega chip in this uh, folder so that was actually kind of news to me too um, it turns out due to the megabyte system in battle network 6 um, even though you can only have five mega chips total um, you're still not limited it's really just based on megabytes right so you can see that roll is 20 megabytes for the regular which means you could actually fit three if you wanted to or four or heck um and same thing with roll uh two you can uh, fit in two of them because of the 40 uh, megabytes so i would say that this folder is probably best for gregor um due to the fact that um tomahawk man really shuts down uh this strategy tomahawk cross rather um being able to have status guard to stop getting paralyzed is big true we have the heat dragons but gregor being able to have um heat cross and charge cross as extra ways to kill tomahawk is pretty big um and of course you can always use um, Erase Cross for a little extra machine gun damage, which is really, really cool too. Um, and of course, uh, Falls Over is also decent as well. Um, being able to charge up your Risky Honeys is certainly nothing to snuff out. Now, I will say one weakness with this folder is certainly the area grabs. Um, you don't really have a lot of uh, control over your space. You've only got two area grabs. And in fact, between your color points and your double points, you're giving up space. Um, in a more ideal world, I would have fit in another area grab, but what can you do? This is already locked in. Um, the grab revenge, though, is pretty clutch. This is going to be really, really important. Um, of course, it does deal a little bit of extra damage for each of the panels you give up, and then you can give them up even further with more area grabs. Um, but that being said, this folder is really resilient, very powerful. Um, it can really suck if you don't connect with your uh, Beast Out Vulcans, but really, as long as you're playing it smartly and patiently, um, it shouldn't be too hard to paralyze the opponent and get them in that spot. With a folder name like OK Boomer, you pretty much know what to expect. High Boomer is absolutely the star of the show. It is dealing 140 damage, which is super solid. It does not flash the opponent and give them iframes, and it also leaves grass panels in their wake, which is really great to combo up with chips like Fire Hit, which can deal 360 if they are on a grass panel. You've got Going Roads that are pretty cute. Um, they basically push the opponent to the back, their little panels on the ground. Um, and the cool thing about that is if you put this in the center, your opponent is not going to be able to dodge the uh, boomer whatsoever. Now, we've also got some other fun combos. Bubble Star 1 can be uh, relatively easier to dodge than um, the other Bubble Stars, but it still combos really nicely with Doll Thunder 3 for a lot, a lot of damage. But then we've also got Machine Gun 3s, a very, very powerful chip in the B code, as well as Tank Can. Um, so Bubble Stars are really cool because even though they can be kind of hard to hit sometimes, your Doll Thunders aren't the only thing that are super great um, to hit with. Obviously, your Tank Cans are dealing 200. If the Fire Hit is on a Grass Panel, that's a lot right there, too. Um, overall, this folder is definitely solid. It's got a lot of elemental coverage. Um, it's also got Blast Many X and Proto Many X on code, which is super cool. Um, I would say one of the weaknesses overall um, is the reliance on certain chips to do damage, right? So um, if you're not connecting with your high boomers on the fire hits, they're a little bit weaker and kind of hard to hit with. Um, same thing with Tank Cannon. Tank Cannon's got kind of a slow windup. So without um, Bubble Stars to really trap them, it can be kind of difficult. But you do a panel grab um, to work with your area grabs to try to put them in awkward positions. And hopefully those going roads can get them into good spots too. Um, yeah, overall, really solid. Can't complain. Brain Freeze is one of my favorite names and puns in the entire format. Of course, the Aura Head is the brain, and we're trying to freeze the opponent so that Aura Head deals double damage. Now, in order to do that, we've got Ice Seeds and we've got Aqua Dragons, both of which are going to fill the enemy's rows with Ice Panels. Now, once they're on an Ice Panel, if they take any water damage whatsoever, they are going to get frozen which means that they are going to be stuck in place. And of course, like I said earlier, those breaking chips deal double damage. Now, Aura Head is pretty strong um, in itself. It's got pretty decent range. It also can't be countered at all, which is kind of cool. Um, now, another fun, interesting thing about Aura Head that I learned the other day from Imaska, shout out to you. Um, if you've got any barrier or, or aura up, you'll deal 50 extra damage. So you can actually expect to this uh, occasionally be 220 damage to turn to 440. Um, now, Golem Hit is also very powerful. It is really, really odd when it comes to its aiming. It will only hit the front row of the opponents, and it will only hit if it's got all three of those panels on it. Um, so a little bit janky. Now, we do have our fan to help bring the opponent into the front row, and fan actually serves double duty um, with Blizzard Ball. 
To be honest, we're really just running Blizzard Ball because it's on um, the same H code as the rest of the other folders. There's not a lot of H um, water chips or star water chips. Um, but Blizzard Ball's not bad. Um, it definitely freezes time. Every now and then, it'll suck up obstacles to deal a hysterical amount of damage, which is why Fan is also in there, right? Fan can bring them in for the Golem Fist, and it can also um, be sucked up by the Blizzard Ball for extra damage. We've got our Fire Chips. Um, of course, Blastman Star, as you've seen in a lot of folders to deal with Tomahawk. We've also got Heatman SP, which is on code for it. And, um, of course, we also have a healthy mix of defense, unlike other folders that are going three and three with invis and anti-damage, where we take one of those out for um, barrier 100s each. Um, they're pretty strong. Uh, a lot of folders do uh, run Windwreck, and of course, Tengu will always get rid of it. And this folder does not have any sword chips to um, take advantage of the opponent going to Tengu for um, you know balancing reasons, of course. Um, but still, a very solid chip nonetheless. Overall, I would say one of the downsides of um, the Brain Freeze is that um, the zone control is not really that great. We've only got three area grabs to work with. Um, that being said, we do want the opponent to be in the front row for the Golem hits, and the fan is usually there for a similar reason. Um, so it's actually not that bad necessarily to be giving up the space. However, um, if your opponent is not going to be standing on the ice panels um, from your ice seed, or um, if the uh, Aqua Dragons are kind of like out of the game at the moment, it can be really hard to get the ices to connect again. So a little bit tricky in that regard. It really does rely on being frozen for the opponent to deal the damage um, that the deck is, is hoping to do. That being said, we still have chips like Aquaman and Machine Gun that are decent overall. Um, and if you can use your crosses very, very well, um, you'll find that Brain Freeze will be a very, very powerful option for you. Summoning snakes from holes is a time-honored battle network tradition. Sure, the snakes are weaker in this game because they are not wood element and therefore they're not hitting for weakness and they're also um, flashing the opponent so it's harder to combo them together. However, um, we do get summon black which synergizes really nicely with holes because you have to have a hole in front of you to summon this little demon. Um, the demon will lock on automatically, kind of like Proto Man, and it will also hit them for sore damage, even though the chip doesn't say it. We've got five triple shots, which are amazing. 100 damage is solid. They're super accurate, basically really hard to dodge. Um, and if you are in a let cross or a race cross, you can take advantage of the fact that they're neutral trips um, by using um, the paralysis from Elect Cross or being able to hit them if they got a four in their number um, to deal a little HP bug, which is super, super cool. We've got our uh, machine guns as well. Now, the fire burns are really great because um, they are going to burn Tomahawk Cross. Obviously, Tomahawk Cross does not get um, uh, paralyzed. So um, that's kind of annoying. So not only are you dealing some fire damage to get rid of it, but you're also cracking uh, the squares. And speaking of cracking, we also have Justice One. This is a big fist that goes down. It basically um, cracks all of your opponent's areas uh, in their sort of baseline three by three. If they are in the very, very center, they will take 220 damage as well as the breaking element. If they're around the fist, they're only gonna take 100 um, and it won't be breaking element. So it's not as powerful as you might think, but it's still a very strong chip. Um, we figured this was more fair than Geddon. Geddon is just a little too powerful in this format. Um, you can basically shut down an entire turn of your opponents if you put it in the right spot, plus being able to do all of your snakes with impunity, just a little bit too strong. Um, so speaking of a little bit too strong, uh, we get Judgment in this folder, and the reason is simple. Um, your space really, really matters because you can only summon snakes on um, area that you control as well as it having to be a hole. Um, so there's not really anything on code that helps with that. And I figure Judgment does two things in this folder. One is that it's um, star code, right? So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, grab banishes or whatever on an opposite code. Um, Judgment also helps you um, stun the opponent again. So if you've got a really good snakes turn, if you've got snakes um, and then Judgment and then more snakes, you can just keep the offensive pressure up without having to worry about waiting for the opponent um, to stop flashing. Uh, because the longer you wait, um, the sooner it might take for those holes to recover and therefore you're not going to be able to do the attacks you want. So Judgment can help with that. Um, and then also in this folder, it's supremely fair because in order for you to actually take the uh, panels back that your opponents have stolen from you with those little books, um, holes are basically not a combo with that. So um, being really, really careful with your Judgment is going to be um, super, super important for the holy snakes. That's how you have to pronounce it. Um, <laughs> and um, I think that makes it just a little bit more fair in this. Now, Blastman and Tengu, of course, are super solid. Blastman, you're going to see a lot of folders. Um, he is floating. He does bas So basically, if you summon him over a hole, he will work just fine. And same goes with Tengu Man. That's why these um, two navvies are picked. And of course, Blastman being fire is another way to get rid of Tomahawk. So overall, a really strong setup. Um, I would recommend it for Gregar for those synergies with Triple Shot I talked about earlier. However, Falzar does have some advantages. You don't have to worry about having air shoes in your Navi Cust, so you have a little more uh, premium to be able to um, 
you know, put in the programs that you want with the space that you want. That being said, um, I do think Gregor is pretty good for this. Um, and I also think that one of the best things about this folder is the defensive capabilities. With the triple shots, it can be really difficult for certain decks to approach you, right? If you're um, up against a Beast Rush folder um, and they don't have, uh, you know, Falzar or they're not able to, um, you know, step over those holes, the triple shots are a really nice way to prevent your opponent from uh, approaching you. Um, the damage output is pretty high. Summon Black, just 200 straight up. Snakes are usually going to hit for maybe 180, um, maybe like 150 or 120 if you're a little less lucky. So pretty solid altogether. However, a downside is um, if your opponent has a really good invis turn, you can basically blank the entire turn, right? Um, it's pretty hard to deal um, chains and chains of damage with the Snakes and Summon Blacks. Um, so you got to really be careful about spacing uh, your attacks and making sure that your Judgment is going to connect um, at the really important times. What can I say about the Lorex? Well, of course, you've got lots of grass panels with the Wood Dragons and the Boomers uh, that are going to be hitting for double damage with the Heat Dragon. Now we've got Corn Fiesta, which is a really fun program advance. It's not necessarily uh, the most powerful program advance, but it is a fun meme, which is very, very fitting for the Rental Rumble. We've got Bubble Stars to help make sure that powerful ships like Tornado can connect, which, by the way, Tornado deals double damage on grass panels. Not sure if you knew that. In fact, um, the Tornadoes are also very good on this one airspin. If you can actually use the Tornado on the airspin device itself, um, it will spin the airspin an additional eight times, which is 400 damage right there. Wow, that's a lot. Um, we do have a decent amount of area grab control with one panel grab and three grabs. Um, and of course, we speak for the trees, so we got Tomahawk Man um, as our backups. Um, overall, this folder is really fun. It's got a lot of elemental strategies, which really help. And the damage potential with Heat Dragon and with all those grass panels is really, really high. I would say that the folder uh, most suffers from inconsistency. Um, there's only one copy of a lot of important ships like Airspin, um, you know, Machine Gun, things like that. Um, so you're really going to want to make sure that your uh, Navi Customizer's got a good custom on this, or you may end up with really janky draws, like maybe two of the Corn Shots, and you want to uh, wait for the third, or maybe you've got your Airspin with no Tornadoes, so definitely keep yourself open with flexibility. And last but not least, we have Get That W, which is a really fun folder submitted by Imaska. We've got Rolling Logs, Boomers, and Lances for a lot of really powerful wood damage, so Tomahawk is going to be really great to double the damage for each of these attacks. As we all know, wood chips are really strong because they don't tend to flash the opponent, which means that we can combo them up really nicely with other chips and other attacks. Um, the Rolling Log is really solid because um, if they're in the middle row, you're going to hit them twice with both of the, both of the logs. Um, but even so, it's pretty nice to have um, a fairly accurate attack um, even if they dodge both of them, uh, being able to dodge uh, one of them is actually really, really difficult. Boomer comes out really fast, it puts grass panels out, and um, is obviously really solid damage. 170 non-flashing damage that puts um, grass panels on, it's like insane how good the Boomer chips are. Um, then of course we've got other chips too. Um, one of the best things that you can do in this folder is double shot into Summon Black. As we all know, Summon Black um, has to summon from a hole in front of you, but it doesn't have to be from your space, unlike Snakes, right? So you can use Double Shot to clear out a lot of the opponent's spaces, um, and it's, of course, solid damage in itself. 120 is nothing to snuff at. Um, and then the Summon Black comes out of it. 260, basically unavoidable damage. It will home into the enemy and hit them with a big sword attack. Very, very powerful stuff. Overall, this folder is really, really strong. It's even got a little Judge Man to help get some of your spaces back. And one Blast Man um, to take care of the grass panels that are going to be on the opponent's side um, that you lay out with the boomers. So overall, really strong. Um, not super oppressive either. It's not really looking to take advantage of a lot of fire chips to deal double damage on grass. It's really just a pretty solid um, folder. Really hard to uh, miss with a lot of these attacks. Some of them are just, you know, pretty decent overall. Um, the only downside that I can think of is that Tomahawk is, of course, hated on by a lot of folders. There are so many folders out there that are really looking to get rid of Tomahawk aggressively. So to use Tomahawk in uh, a really proactive way, can be lost pretty easily. Maybe um, Gregor isn't so bad for this folder. We can power up our charge shots with Heat Cross, um, and then we don't have to worry so much about being anti Tomahawk. But still, I think being able to charge up your attacks um, for double damage is a little too good to pass up on. A few quick things to know about the Rental Rumble if you're interested in playing and you're at the end of this video. Congratulations for making it this far. Please know that you can register using our link that we've got in the description below. You will need to be on Challenge as well as our Discord so that our opponents can find you. 
The Erase Beast Chip Charge is banned from this event. Please do not use it. We've got all sorts of information about why that is in the description below. Um, if you want to make your own folder for this event, you can, but it must match the template exactly. So no, you don't have to trade a folder if you can make one of these yourself, but they do have to match identically. Remember that your Navi Customizer has to be on the 5x5 five five grid. There cannot be any bugs or the program bug stop. It's a simplified format, so we want to make sure that the HP totals aren't super crazy and that if you want to raise your buster power to start spamming beast attacks, that's going to take something out of your Navi Customizer slots to do so. Please, please, please get excited. I can't say enough how I am. As always, check out our Discord. We've got all the information you need for everything there. Um, ask us any questions right here in the YouTube channels, and I can't wait to tell you more about the Rental Rumble this weekend.